Hey guys, Mix here, and in today's video, we're doing a couple things. Now, this probably is going to be a very long video, but I do want to uh, just give a little bit of an update along with, you know, do a couple minor things and reveal some pretty good news. Well, really good news, I should say. But I also, like I just said, want to update you guys about with everything that's been going on with the coronavirus and everything like that how it's been affecting me being able to make videos and everything like that. So I'm actually in the worst hit state in the country. Like a lockdown is probably about to happen where we have to stay inside. I think that they're putting in like a, a curfew or something. I don't know. A whole bunch of stores have been shutting down and everything like that. And there just really hasn't been much to do. So it's been pretty boring around here to be honest. But there's like a bunch of stores that I need to go to to get hardware and stuff for, you know, everything I have. And a lot of them I go and there's like no one there. It's literally like a ghost town in some of these stores. Like it's pretty insane. But I don't want to talk too much about that because it's literally all over the news and everything like that. So I want this to be a break from all of that. And I want to reveal some good news to you guys right now. So if you guys remember in last video with the NASCAR, so the one before last video when we bought the trailer, uh, we took this thing out for its first street drive and it was epic when it was running, but there was some type of issue that cut spark while we were driving and it made it completely bogged down. Throughout that video, I just sum it up if you guys didn't see it. We tried super hard to try and get it running. We thought maybe it was the kill switch, so we, you know, unhooked it from the actual switch and just jumped it together to see and still nothing happened so in last video with the trailer and everything like that we went and tried to you know check out the ignition modules and everything like that and i looked at all your guys comments you know tried to see if you guys can help me out or anything like that but one thing that made me believe that it wasn't the ignition modules and even though those ignition modules did look a little bit funky and dirty and everything like that the one thing that made me believe that it was just something else. I just had this gut feeling that it wasn't anything like computer wise or anything I guess I could say was that after it turned off we did get it running and you guys also saw that but when I put it in gear it immediately, it immediately turned off like when there was vibrations and whatever going throughout the cart it something seemed to have shaken loose. That's what it just seemed like in my head and I still continue to believe that. So I went through the wiring harness uh, I thought it was up here because the it just seemed like the kill switch just, was just engaged. That's what it always just seemed, and I kept that gut feeling. So I checked all those, all those connections. Those were all good, and that kind of led me to believe that it was a computer. But throughout all those days of continuing to keep trying to get this thing back up and running, I completely forgot that when I put the wiring harness you know, throughout the cart, I had connections that went behind the battery. They were all taped up, so I didn't know, but you guys can see them down there, right? there and there was actually a connection that came loose and caused this whole thing to turn off if you guys follow my instagram you guys saw that i throw up the picture right now so as you guys just saw it came loose on one side i it's it all the other ones were completely fine i mean even when that other connector you know the side that was still on i could not get it off the wire i was pulling on it like crazy so i guess maybe i just didn't crimp down the other side as good and just from it driving it uh, made it come loose, but I got that all taken care of, and this thing runs, and it runs mint. So, I mean, with that being said, this thing is mechanically ready, once again, to go out onto the street and fully be ripped. So, uh, definitely be on the lookout for that. It's been, it's, it's been raining for like the past two days or so. Right now we have a little bit of a uh, break, but it's still pretty crummy out there. Tomorrow's supposed to rain all day, but... Probably sometime during the weekend, we can use the trailer for the first time and load this thing up, take it out, and uh, bang some gears in this without hopefully uh, any issues. But before I do that, I do want to uh, check the oil on this thing. Now, it does have pretty new oil in there, but since it's been ran and everything like that, it's probably taken out some more contaminants, and I do want to drain it and see how that looks. Before we do that, I also want to let you guys know that the trailer, the new trailer right here, uh, sh after this video, we should be able to completely restore this thing. Now, the video I have in mind should be a really awesome video, and uh, should be very satisfying. That's all I'm going to say for right now, but this trailer is going to be transformed into something amazing. So you're definitely not going to want to miss the next video. It's going to be a little bit different than what we usually do, but it's going to be very fun. So with that little update out of the way, I want to go ahead and 
get something done. Now this isn't going to be a full working video. Just going to do a couple minor things. I mean, we're not even going to be doing a full oil change just because uh, I have a new filter on the way, but I'm afraid that if it's not going to come in time by this weekend, that it won't be here just because I don't know how the whole shipping deal is going on with this whole COVID-19 thing, but uh, I'm gonna have to wait to put in the new oil until the new filter comes, but that filter has actually never been off, so I'm very curious to see how it looks. Really cross my fingers that there's no metal flakes or anything like that in this oil. Might be a little bit, maybe from the pistons or whatever breaking in or whatever, but shouldn't be anything crazy, hopefully. Actually, before I go ahead and drain out the oil, let me just show you guys it running. I'm sure, some of you guys want to see that. Not going to run it for too long though, because the fumes, but it fires right up. Definitely a little watery. So here's a uh, closer look for you guys. Definitely seems a little bit like low in viscosity, if you know what I mean. Like, doesn't seem thick like oil. I'm gonna have to give it a little bit of a uh, sniff test <laughs> to see if it's fuel. It's not water because this thing's air cooled. So, you know, no coolant or water going through the engine. What could have happened is the engine could uh, flood it at one point from cranking it, you know, over and over again, which I definitely think could be a culprit for possible gasoline in the oil, especially when this whole spark thing happened, I continued to crank it and crank it. But I'm just gonna let that all drain out, and uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna check out this filter, see how I can get to it, and then we will inspect that as well. It is right up there, so definitely a little bit of a pain to get to, but should be able to get it. Oh man. Ugh. That bolt is rounding out bad. Alrighty guys, so it's like an hour from the last clip and uh, never have I thought I would be saying this, but I'm having problems with this oil change. For whatever reason, the bolt that holds on the oil filter is not the OEM one whatsoever. It, it is a, like a box bolt, I guess you could say. So instead of there being a head being like that, it is just a square. So, I have no other tool that's meant for that besides an open-end wrench, which is just bound to strip it. It's already like falling apart that bolt. So I really do not know why that's on there. The last time that was off, which was 20 years ago most likely, maybe the old OEM bolt stripped and whoever's doing the oil change threw that on for some reason. It's supposed to have a 17 millimeter on the bottom drain plug, which it does, and a 17 millimeter oil filter bolt, and it doesn't. It's got a weird <laughs> square bolt. I don't know. I'm gonna have to look into that, see if there's some kind of tool that's meant for those type of bolts, cause that one right now is literally just like crusting and just turn, it's turning into a circle. And I've ran into that problem several times and that is the worst possible thing that could ever literally happen to you while working on something. It's honestly the worst feeling ever. So I'm gonna learn from what I've done in the past instead of just continuing to just throw stuff at it. I'm gonna stop, look at it, see if I can get the correct tool for it and get it off without just the whole headache of trying to rush getting it off. There's no rush. This thing won't be on the road until Saturday, which is like two, three days away. So there's no rush at all. I still have to get the oil filter for it. I just figured it would be kind of cool to look at the oil filter and see what it is, but the oil is done training out of the engine. So I do want to pull that out and take a look at it under the lights. All right, so right off the bat, I mean, it doesn't look really dirty at all. It's got like a greenish tint to it, which is a little odd, but yeah, as you guys can see how liquidy and non-thick this is, <laughs> the oil that was in it is 1040. So I have some 1040 here, and I mean, it's not a thick oil to start off with, but I mean, just right off the bat, I could tell it's a lot thicker than what this is. I mean, that's like water. It actually doesn't smell like fuel at all. It actually smells like clean oil. I mean, this oil only has probably about an hour on it, but since it was the first new oil to go into this engine, uh, you know, it, it's a good idea to change it out. So the engine maybe could have just gotten a little bit hot from revving it and stuff like that without airflow that 
the oil could have possibly overheated a little bit and all the detergents and like thickening substance in oil could have broken down and you know turned into this which is possibly burnt oil and burnt oil doesn't supply the lubrication that an engine needs to lubricate everything in the engine <laughs> so I definitely think if we kept running this same oil in here probably after a couple rides we could have ended up spinning rod or something like that so I'm just gonna throw the drain plug back in and then what I want to do real quick is just rewire up the kill switch. Alright, so the drain bolt and the kill switch is all wired up once again. So with that being said, I'm going to be needing to end off the video here. I just want to update you guys and show you guys that I didn't fall off the face of the planet or anything like that. It took me a little bit longer than I hoped to uh, try and fix the spark issue with this, but luckily the problem wasn't anything major because those ignition modules are actually like a hundred bucks like a piece, so definitely a little bit uh, expensive. But once I get that oil filter off and everything like that, which I'm Probably gonna just do off camera so you guys aren't really missing out on anything. I'm gonna just put in a new filter, put in some new fresh oil. I'm also gonna make some uh, supports for the carburetors as well. But this thing will be ready to rip once again. But anyway guys, follow my social medias. They'll be on the outro of this video and Instagram Snapchat I use the most. But thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, comment, tell your friends about the channel.